Welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about sample spaces, which are a really useful tool in solving some probability questions. So first, what exactly is a sample space? And so it's a set or list of all possible outcomes. So it's better explained with an example. So for example, the sample space of a coin toss is going to be just a list of the different uh, outcomes from a coin toss. And in this case, it's either heads or tails, because that's all you can get when you toss a coin. Uh, another example is if you roll a die, which is a singular of dice, then the sample space is just a list of all the numbers you can get, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? Um, and then this is a really useful example, a sample space of rolling two dice and then adding the numbers together. Again, it's a list of all the possible outcomes you can get. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six here. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is the second die, this is the first die, and then you add the numbers together. So there are 36 different possibilities that, that can happen um, when you roll these two dice. So this can be a really useful tool in solving some probability questions and also for things like Monopoly. So the first example we're going to look at is calculating the probability of getting a 7 when you roll two die. Okay, um, So the probability of 7 is equal to the number of 7s divided by the number of all. So this would be pretty hard to figure out if you didn't have a sample space because you'd have to count up in your head all the different ways of getting a 7. This is just a much easier way of doing it. So in this case, we're going to go p of 7 is equal to, so it's all the number of 7s, which is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I just clean that up. Um, so there are 6 7s divided by all, which is 36. So there's 36 different possibilities. So that means the probability of getting a 6 is 1 over 6 when you simplify that. Okay, so it's just a much easier way is to write out the sample space first and then to count all the sevens you see there instead of trying to think in your head the different possibilities. And so that, that's the same for all any different number here. I just chose seven as an example. So I'll just do a few more examples just to show you guys um, kind of, I guess, other ways of using it. So for example, we'll look at the probability of getting a two, which is you count all the twos. In this case, it's just one. And there's only one two, so it's going to be one over 36, the probability of getting a two. Handy enough, um, we'll look at the probability of getting an odd number. So P, the dark blue isn't actually that bright. I'll go orange. P of getting an odd number. Okay, so if you were to count all the different odd numbers up in here, so it's going to be the threes. So we're going to say one, two, and then all the fives, three, four, five, six. And then you keep going like that. So I'll count all the sevens, the nines, and the elevens. And get rid of those ones. And um, we'll end up with 18 over 36. So the probability of getting an odd number um, as your result is exactly half. Right, the next example I will look at is, say, getting the probability of a 10. Um, probability of a 10, we just count all the 10s. 1, 2, 3, 3 over 16, um, or 3 over 36, my bad. 3 over 36, um, and you can simplify that as just 1 over 12. Uh, last one then, the P of prime. Okay, so the probability of uh, rolling the dice and getting a prime number. So first, the best thing to do would be to list out all the different prime numbers uh, between 1 and 12. So P is equal to, so what are the prime numbers? It's 2, 3, 5, 7, and 11. Okay, so those are the prime numbers. So again, the definition of a prime number is any number uh, that the only factors are one and itself. So you should learn off the first few prime numbers and you're just kind of understand that you can figure it out as you go along. Um, so the probability of getting a two, three, five, seven, or 11. So if you count up all the twos, the threes, the fives, the sevens, or the 11s, uh, and then, yeah, if you count them all up, you'll find that it's 15. So I'm not gonna go through it each one, one, one by one. Uh, 15 divided by 36, and that's the probability of getting a prime number when you roll the two die. So we're going to do one more example, and um, they're all the kind of basic ones. This next one is going to be a difficult one, so this is a really important uh, lesson to learn, and not just for sample spaces. So we will look at the probability of not doubles. Okay, um, and the thing here isn't about the doubles; it's about the word not. So this comes up a lot in probability, and it's a really, really helpful tool. Uh, you can answer questions that are pretty much impossible to answer otherwise. So you do have to remember this, so pay special attention. So again, like I said, it doesn't have to be doubles. It can be anything, okay? So the little trick I'll learn or a little formula is the P of not something. Okay, so probability of 
not something happening is equal to one minus the probability of something happening. Okay, where something is sort of a vague definition to use there, but as long as it's the same thing. So for example, the probability of not doubles is equal to one minus the probability of doubles. Say, okay? so for this example here, if we go up and look for the probability of not doubles. So doubles is when you roll a one and a one, a two and a two, a three and a three, a four and a four, a five and a five, and a six and a six. So you could count up all of the different numbers that aren't doubles. So all these numbers that aren't two, four, six, eight, ten, 10, and 12, but that'd take you forever. So it's much easier to find the probability of not doubles using this trick here. So in this doubles case, you can count them up if you want. It'll take you a while, but you can count it up. But in some other cases, it's impossible to do it any other way. So sometimes you won't be able to count them. Um, so you do have to remember this trick. So the probability of not doubles is gonna be one minus the probability of doubles. Uh, and just the reason that this works, so the reason that this works is that all of the probabilities, so all probs add up to one, okay? So all the probabilities of something, when you add them all together, they have to add up to one. So that's where this comes out of. But anyway, I'll continue here. So the probability of not doubles is gonna be equal to one minus P of doubles. So I'm gonna squeeze this in here. So first we'll calculate the P of doubles, which is just equal to, so it's if we roll it, if we roll a one and a one, so it's, we get two, four, six, eight, 10, or 12, anything on this sort of diagonal line here. So that's when we roll a one and a one, a two and a two, a three and a three, and so on. So that's going to be, um, six over 36. Uh, so that means the probability of not doubles. So P of, nope, let me just redo that. Not very good right handwriting. P of not doubles is equal to one minus the probability of doubles, which is six over 36. Um, so that's gonna be 30 over 36, if you work that out in fractions, or else five over six. Okay, so you could count all 30 numbers and figure it out that way, but it's just much easier to do it this way. And like I said, sometimes you won't be able to count it all. So you need to learn this uh, little formula. It'll come up again and again and again. So that's all for this video. I'm gonna leave you guys with just a quick example you can try. Um, so we did the sample space of rolling two die. So rolling two die, and we said we're gonna add them together. But in this case, I want you to multiply the two numbers. Uh, and get there and get the result then. So you should do a little sample space out yourself as well. I'm just gonna scribble this out here. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's a terrible six. It'll do. And then the same one, two, three, four, five, six. And then you should fill out each of these little um, numbers. So again, you should multiply the one by one and the two by two. Um, so you can sort of just copy the sample space we have up there and then the different um, probabilities I want you to figure out are p of p of seven, um, p of two, p of odd. So the probability of getting an odd number, the probability of getting ten. So these are sort of the same ones we had, um, for the sum, and the probability of getting a prime number as a result. Okay. So give that a shot yourselves and leave your answers down in the comments. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you have any questions, then just ask. Um, and if you think the video is helpful, then share it with your friends. That'd be great. Okay, uh, we'll see you next time where we're going to look at and and or problems. So what and and or means in probability. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time.